Susan B. Katz, and I am the author of over a dozen books, including The Story of Jane Goodall, which I'm going to read to you today. I'm going to read parts of it, and I'm so excited to be here with Girl Guiding. I am first going to read about when she was a child. Jane loved living near the sea. Once in a while, her mother would take Jane and her sister to a relative's farm in the country. Curious, four-year-old Jane wanted to understand how hens lay eggs. So Jane sat in the hen cage and waited. Hours later, the hen came in and settled down. Jane watched and waited. Finally, the hen wiggled out an egg. Jane gasped with excitement. This was her first real animal observation. Jane ran home to tell her mother all about it. Jane's mother took her to the library often. There, she found a book called The Story of Dr. Doolittle by Hugh Lofting. Jane loved how Dr. Doolittle spoke to the animals so much that she read it over and over again. So Jane was actually born in England, and then she went to Africa to work with chimpanzees and research them. So we're going to read a little bit about David Greybeard, one of the chimpanzees. A little later on, an older chimp with a gray beard let Jane come close to him. Jane had named him David Greybeard. Jane held out a piece of fruit. When David Greybeard reached for the fruit, he rested his fingers in Jane's hand and held it. This was magical for Jane. Another day, Jane saw that David Greybeard was holding a long grass stem and sticking it into a termite mound. He was using it as a tool to get termites so he could eat them. This discovery was groundbreaking. Before Jane's observation, scientists thought that only humans made and used tools. Jane immediately sent a telegram about her discovery to Dr. Leakey. She observed other chimps in David Greybeard's community. Jane used their features and personalities to tell them apart. Goliath was outgoing and adventurous. He was the most powerful male of the troop at that time. Flo, the oldest female of the troop, had a big nose like a bulb and ragged ears. Mr. McGregor, one of the first chimps Jane met, was often grumpy. So Jane named him after the crabby gardener in the book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Now I'm going to answer some of your questions. Uh, first of all, I had a fourth grade teacher named Mrs. Schultz who took us outside to write poetry every Thursday. And we sat under a willow tree and wrote and... I became an author then when I was a child and I started publishing um, poetry when, I, when she was my teacher. So that is kind of how I got inspired to be an author. I just loved words and how they rhymed and how they sounded and alliteration and all of those kinds of things. So Mrs. Schultz, uh, my fourth grade teacher, I think inspired me to become an author. And then how I got my first book published, I actually went to um, Italy, to Bologna, Italy, and there's a book fair called La Fede de Libre de Ragazzi, the children's book fair every year in Bologna, and I um, got my first contract there meeting with a publisher who's actually in Bath, England, um, uh, called Barefoot Books, and they published, they gave me the contract for my Mama Earth. Um, I had a different book come out first, and my agent sold that book, um, and that was called ABC Baby Me. So going to the Italian book fair was very helpful, a uh, Bologna book fair. And then my favorite author, this is a really hard one because I have a lot of favorite authors, um, but growing up I read a lot of Dr. Seuss. I also loved the book Harold and the Purple Crayon. And as an adult, I loved books by Paolo Coelho, who lives in Switzerland, like The Alchemist. And then on, I think my favorite book is called The Book Thief, and it's by Marcus Zusak. And it's just so beautifully written. Um, and I actually got to meet Marcus and work with him. Thanks for your questions, Girl Guiding, and talk to you all soon. Mm -hmm.